Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul Josu and welcome back to my Cravers tutorial slash playthrough to be more specific part 2 of it plenty of things need to be done but the most important steps have been taken we now know how we're going to play now all that is left to do is well play and actually conquer the galaxy and also hello there dear vine ship what are you capturing you're capturing pretty powerful system that you're not going to be able to use for a while. Well, they doesn't unfold, they tend to vine everything they can. Anyway, what should we do? Let's deal with the notifications first. So, marketplace, luxury prices increase. Now, there is a thing about the marketplace. You see, usually marketplace is a pretty useful place to have, which sounds kind of stupid now that I think about it. But there's always the eternal problem when you look into the research queue, there are things, so many things in second era of economic trade uh, that you just, you oftentimes don't get it. In this case, sure, it would give us access to Miners Union and, of course, the marketplace itself, which is very useful. But there are two other things. One is accelerated production. It's extremely important, I would say. It's just because of how much flexibility it gives you. Granted, as cravers, sometimes you do not really have an option of using accelerated production all that much because of how fragile your economy is. And I admit, it is possible as cravers to just skip multi thread management and instead go for galactic commodities. It is something that I should have mentioned in the last video, I just didn't think to say that. Because, you know, it was an hour-long video after all. The other thing that you generally almost always want in Era 2 is atmospheric filtration. Of course, maybe you have galaxy generation when there are just not that many ash planets, but oftentimes ash planets are there, and ash planets are very useful in my honest opinion, because of incredible amounts of industry that they give you, but they also support some food growth as well, which means that it's easier to colonize them. So, they are really, really nice planets, and you very frequently want atmospheric filtration and I right now also want it but not just because Delphinus has ash planets and lavas as well. I mostly want to have something from this era in order to get to this bonus as quickly as possible. Basic system development. It's very important because this allows you to ship your population between systems. Remember what I said in the last video about you being the plague? Well a plague isn't going to be very successful if it cannot transfer. It has to be constantly on the move, switching hosts, finding new bodies to infect. We are not different in any way, shape or form. Once we colonize a system, we may want or need to move population out or into the said system. So we need to have access to basic system development so that we can upgrade our systems, which will give us access to spaceport, which in turn will let us move our population in whatever way we like which is very useful. Additionally, what is very important, it will let us use our luxury resources to improve our systems. And I really like Red Sang as the Cravers. You do need this food production in order to get as much as you can from your population before your planets are no longer able to sustain your population's growth. You basically want to spread out as quickly uh, as humanly possible. Again, you are like plague. What do plagues do? They multiply as much as they possibly can. Take good examples from them. Granted, plagues by themselves are a mistake of the evolution, by which I mean plagues happen when the wrong kind of bacteria are not in the species they think they are in. <laughs> Which is kind of, well, ironic, this is why they kill you, because normally, you know, diseases don't want to kill hosts. Plagues don't want to do that either, they just do it by mistake. This is the difference between the plague and the cravers. Cravers don't kill anything by mistake, but we can learn from the plagues. Anyway, things have finished, population gained, yep, system colonized, and mutation. I have also renamed my plants. I'll probably change my naming scheme in this game, because I kind of feel like the theme for this game should be a bit more like distanced. For example, I feel like calling f systems like Food 1, Food 2, or Science 1, and so forth. But at this point, I just, I just had to name it Mutation, because come on, two foodie plants and one toxic plant, that's just so mutaty. So I might change my idea for how to name systems. It's not a big deal anyway, it's just for me to remember which system is which one, which is basically the most important thing of all. Low mana power. Now, as for mana power, because you are cravers, you do start with how on earth is it called? It's called Chain Gang Program, which is actually fairly useful. Let's see you turn population into mana power, which is what you're going to use in order to never run out of mana power. It's a rather powerful nifty thing. For right now, I don't really care about mana power going low, because, well, it's being used to fuel 
my armies, my garrisons are newly created system as well as any ships that may have and that into the atmosphere of such system, but no, it's just on mutation that it's being used for. Mind you that the Quiver's army is more powerful than other armies. You have extremely elite powerful troops on the ground and you want to invest quite heavily into that so that your conquests can go smoothly. For right now, however, this is not something we want to do because one thing I'll tell you right now, do not ever bother improving infantry because it's just so inefficient and every infantry lost subtracts from the amount of tanks and airplanes you have because then the AI decides to turn your tanks and airplanes into infantry which is again inefficient use of your stuff. As soon as it's possible I'll just replace infantry entirely by tanks and upgrade them as much as possible. Sure tanks can be counted by air units but it has always worked out well for me, so whatever. Anyway, I'm going to drink some more tea. Or rather, start drinking tea because I haven't drunk any this video yet. <sighs> now to the stuff. Actually, I think I chose the wrong kind of tea. You see, when you record videos, you need to have some kind of fluid that tends to... How do I call, say... Moisturize your throat sounds wrong, but this is basically the gist of it. You need to make sure that everything inside of you is nice and moist. Again, that sounds wrong. <laughs> but this kind of tea I just picked, mm, I think it's a bit... Not maybe too bitter, it's too... I don't know how, what, how to call it. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the tea. Let's see, there are some pieces trying to kill my skull. Let's retreat, because I don't wanna... Alright, oh, I had nowhere to retreat. Oopsies. Well, either way, this scout was probably going to die, and to be entirely honest, I never really cared about the guy. Don't tell him that, though. So, then we can just forget about his existence. It wasn't entirely important. Uh, hey, now we're seeing some dust, because he's dead, and we don't have to pay him. It's nice, isn't it? Alright, let's disband this intruder so we can finish our faction quest. You can read that by pausing the video, and we're going to get a new faction quest in a moment. I thought will you gain a new faction quest instantly though. Don't tell me it's bagged. Maybe you, I'll get it at the start of the next turn. I'm almost certain I'm supposed to gain a new quest now though, so... Uh, please don't be a bug. Anyway, we now have a free ship, like I said. It's a pretty tanky one. It doesn't deal the most damage, but it can certainly destroy our wheel. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Turtle is a good option for this guy because he is using kinetics and the wheel is dead. Now, of course, the Vodiani are angry about this, but then again, guys, he kind of moved into my space without my permission and I'm Craver, so what did you expect? GTFO, I don't care about your opinion, I'm about to murder you. I'm not really about to, it's still it's going to take me several years game time, but I'm going to try my best at killing you. So with that in mind, let's have a quick look at mutation. I'm going to want to start with drone networks. I can speed it up with dust, I would rather save it on something else. And now what I'm going to do is transform my hero, my governor, onto this system to help it be kickstarted. As you can see now I can get drone networks into just a single turn, followed up with you know, industrial infrastructure and sustainable farms. And this will let the system start a little bit faster, be a bit more efficient, and intervent transport networks will be finished in one turn anyway. In this cultivation, yeah, that is going to take a bit more time, it's fine, I don't think we care all that much, to be entirely honest with you. I just noticed that Host has another source of Hyperion, I'm definitely going to have to use Hyperion weapons, which is another reason why you may want to consider not using your starting hero as an admiral, because, okay, there we go, there's the second chapter, because I'm going to show you the second chapter in a moment, firstly, let's talk about the things I meant to talk about, because Kraver's Admirals, what do they have? They gain the ability to boost their productive weapon damage. But in our situation, we have a ton of Hyperium in our systems, and it would, and because we're going to have to use a lot of titanium on our ships, we may be forced into a situation when we actually have to use Hyperium as our source of damage. Although looking at this, six, nine Hyperium versus three versus, okay, 8 titanium, so the difference is not that big, but again, keep in mind, we need to spay titanium just making ships, and Hyperium not. We, we don't have to use Hyperium for making ships, except for the coordinators. So, for that reason, this uh, the Kravish heroes are less reliable as admirals, because depending on your galaxy generation, you may not have very much use out of some of their abilities. 
Alrighty then, so now what else is there to do? Let's have a quick look see. So I gained two Calgaros in my system mutation. Awesome! I'm really happy about that. Now, they're good... Oh wow, I also got a Guardian. Huh. Can a Guardian be a slave? I think he can be. I'm pretty sure he is enslaved. Let's have a quick look see. We have how much penalty from slaves? Only 30, so I guess Guardian does not count a slave. Awesome! Thank you, Unfold, and that's really nice. Okay. I mean... Yeah, I'm not gonna ban the guy, then why would I do anything of the sort? He gives me extra approval, he doesn't give me any innate bonuses, but at the same time, he's not considered a slave. Then again, this means that he's less efficient. Oh well, whatever. It's still free population which will help kickstart the system again, which is a very nice thing to happen. So, what was I talking about? I have no idea. Oh yeah, this is the gaining population from a random event. Yeah, so that was nice. I don't really have anything else to comment, so let's just move on because I'm not sure what else I wanted to say. There's surely something I meant to say, but I no longer remember what it was, so whatever. Anyway, let's go ahead and colonize the Ash Planet. Probably this is a pretty good combination of stuff. Rutso would actually let me colonize this Ash and be quite good with that. Meanwhile, there's Savannah, which has good innate food production and also extra industry production. And Savannah has generated less uh, negative approval, so I'm going to go for Savannah's planet first. And this time I'm going to listen to it. Being colonized. And drink some tea. Ah, uh, that's not a kitty I would want to have at home, I'll be entirely honest with you. It looked kinda scary. So anyway, there's the platform of years? Oh! Hi there! Man, it's been a long time since I've seen you, dear sir. Huh. I mean, I have read the description of this uh, anomaly when I entered the system and chose which planet to colonize, but I just realized it's THE platform of years. Oh, okay, nice. Anyway, I'm going to speed up the colonization of this planet. This is why I wanted to save Dust. And again, another reason why you may decide to skip mod effort management. I, like I said, I like it just because of how much flexibility it gives me in the future. But if, for example, you have a bad situation when it comes to strategic resources, or luxury resources for that matter, Galactic Commodities this is certainly a better choice, because you can then buy luxuries that you need, and you can make, get more strategic resources as well, which is nice. I'm still tempted kind of to go for Miners Union. But uh, we'll see if I do that in a moment. Alright, anyway, our quest. Now, spoiler alert, because I'm going to talk quite a bit about the Kravis quest now, because right now, what you do is the third most important choice in your Kraber career. It's the least important of the three, mind you, but it's still quite impactful, so you should consider it quite well. So you have two options. One is to investigate, and one is to restore. So investigate is very tempting, or uh, when you just read about it, it gives you the infinity shield, which is actually really good. It's a shield, but it uses titanium, which already by itself is a very nifty concept that is very, sometimes very useful. And just the way it works is extraordinarily useful for Craver ships. I love it, it's amazing, especially in early game if you can get it quickly enough. However, the restore ability gives you a new hero. Like I said, I'll be relying on having a new hero who will be the Admiral for my fleets. It's not the best Admiral, it is an Endless, as you can read right now, it is actually an Endless hero, but the Endless hero's abilities are actually crap, which is, makes me really disappointed. I mean, for crying out loud, these are THE Endless, the guys who wrote the entire galaxy way back when, the guys that... Uh, spoiler again. He uh, killed most of the lost, and you know, the guys that did all the cool stuff and nasty stuff and creepy, and scary, and fascinating stuff, all those guys, and their ratio bonuses are one of the worst in the entire game. Like, even manufacturers have better bonuses, in my opinion, because those things that they have are just not very synergetic and don't give you very good bonuses whatsoever. So, yeah, no, I'm not a big fan of uh, him as a hero, but he is a free hero you can get, and this is the important part. If you do go into going in, choosing to investigate rather than restore, will lock you on your path of your quest. At some point in the future, your quest will determine. Will, no, let's put it differently. Once you click this button and con hit confirm, the final stage of your quest will be decided. There will be only one way that your quest will be 
can possibly end, and it will end by turning this swarm of Gravers into spiders. Not literal spiders, but that's how the game refers to them, if I remember correctly. And you'll be not given a choice in that matter, and you have to like it whether you like it or not. This will require you to destroy an enemy, a big enemy fleet, which by itself is really cool. I love destroying that fleet, that was the most, one of the better battles in the entire game, which unfortunately means that, yes, AI in this game, in my opinion, needs to be taught how to mix their weapons correctly, because it's awful at that, but we'll talk about that later. But, yeah, you will not get any choice. However, if you go for Restore, you will have a choice. You can either go for the same end that you would have to go for in, uh, if you went for Investigate, which, by the way, the final bonus for them is just lets you ignore Force Twists for free, which uh, sounds kind of neat, but it's also kind of useless, because you can also just spend your saved up influence to do the same thing, so no, not cool, not cool, not really a worthwhile finish to such uh, a faction quest. However, Restore lets you end by bringing the Endless back into the galaxy, which is cool, I might add. You are again led by the virtual Endless, sure you are no longer an independent nation, but who cares, your masters are back, that's a Wonderful joyous occasion and you turn into little wasps and it's awesome and you just wasp everybody and everybody loves wasps, right? Those are just so adorable. It's awesome how they sting you for no reason and then it hurts a lot. Yeah, everybody loves wasps, but the final reward, however, is definitely worth it. What was the final reward? Oh, yeah, <laughs> the final reward was that they gain influence every time they queue off ship. And you don't even need a module for this, you don't need any improvement, you just gain free influence every time you kill. Which is amazing, and you want it. I want it, and I want it here as well. You should go for restore, and that's what I'm going to go for. So, thank you very much. We're going to restore our sovereign, and we'll use, and we'll be let back into more of our sovereigns, and we'll be back reintegrated into the Endless Empire which is really, really fun. It also, in my opinion, kind of ties... Also, I, my voice really cracked right there, didn't it? But anyway, it kind of ties with the general theme, the main quest of this game, doesn't it? With the Academy quest, I mean. Which makes it kind of ironic. If you ally, align yourself with the Endless, how does it make sense when you then align yourself with the Lost during the Academy quest? I don't think it makes much sense, does it? But you can't do that, which is strange. Whatever, let's not talk about it. Let's talk about the game. Alrighty then, what do I need to do? So, let's have a quick look. See, so, uh, first of all, I need to configure Triumph and Essa. So, Triumph needs to be getting ships from host, which is good. But Essa needs to be getting ships from Mutation, which it also is doing, which is good. Also, did I boost you? Yes, I did. Alright, good. I can spend influence to increase the amount of immigrants, which is actually a good thing, by the way, in order to help this... Uh, Output stone turn into an actual colony faster. It might be worthwhile because if the Vodiani come here, they'll just instantly take over the system, which I would not appreciate, but it's not gonna be a big increase and it costs me a lot of influence to do so. I may want to save that influence instead. Then again, I feel like the AI would go for the lupus system first since it's relatively easy to colonize if you try. So I think I'm safe, I don't have to spend extra influence, it should all be fine. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is have a quick look at the research. So plenty of stuff in the third era I could go for, but they are kind of expensive. Five tests to get any of those. I may want to with not get any of them just yet. I got what I wanted and I can now move on to other stuff. So, one thing that is tempting me is to continue with science and exploration tree. For the very simple reason that first of all it unlocks some uncommon luxuries and we never know we might need them. Hyperium engines, I love them. Unfortunately they use Hyperium and if I want to use Hyperium as weapons, it will be a bit of a problem because I will need to use Hyperium as many of the support modules as well. So I'm again thinking about the decision to go for titanium or Hyperium weapons, but I still don't need to make that choice. What I do need to make, a uh, the kind of choice I do need to make, is choosing if I want to go for pure scale accelerators or aerocaratic sap. Pure scale accelerators give me access to iron, and I think I saw an iron plant somewhere, but more importantly, they give you access to magnetic fuel generators, which is a very efficient uh, scientific improvement, which helps you a ton when you are entering into the middle game. However, the alternative is getting a little bit of approval, which actually will not mean anything whatsoever, as Cravers you operate with such humongous numbers of negative and positive uh, approval that this extra plus 5 is actually meaningless. But, 
I'm drinking tea there, sorry. What I do care about is H3 Fleet Accelerator, because this does let you launch surprise attacks. And speaking of which, I need to mention what kind of victory condition am I going for in this playthrough. Because it's actually kind of important to mention. I did say that the two easiest ones are Science and the Supremacy. Now, with the Suprem uh, Supremacy victory, you need to snipe out the enemy home systems. That's uh, what I'm going to try and achieve in this series, because science is kind of boring meh, I get science in almost every, science victory in almost every one of my uh, endless space playthroughs, like literally way too often, whereas there are some other uh, victory conditions, like for example Conquest, that actually, I got Conquest in the private version of endless space to the testing version, testing batch, but I don't think I ever did on the official version, because it's just, it's ridiculously bad. Conquest Victor needs to be buffed, but I'll talk about it maybe some other day. But anyway, we're gonna go for Supremacy because it's going to be more fun this way, and I get to teach you how to snipe enemy capitals. I may not be too, uh, like, as efficient as possible, because I want to have some fun as well, I don't want the fun to end too quickly. But I'll try to be at least somewhat efficient, so we'll talk about that later. So this is the kind of victory type I go for, which, and for that victory type, H3 Fleet Accelerator can be indeed very, very useful. Can be, doesn't have to be, but it would give me the option of going for it. We can also have a look at the appliance, the technologies that would be made cheaper if we were to research anything, and if I were to go for pure scale accelerators, all I get access to is deserts, which there are some in the galaxy, I admit, but Eurocaritic Sap gives me access to Gariton Shaded Laboratories, which again are very nice for extra science. Unfortunately, they again is Hyperion, so I'm again reconsidering the kind of resource I'll rely on, but well, again, it's another choice I'll have to make right now. Alternatively, instead of going for this upgrade right now, which is completely pointless, so I don't want to go for it because curiosity is... Uh, nah, I'm not too keen on those right now. But what I care about is Xenology. Yes, I don't care about efficient shielding just yet. We don't need extra sh attack ships right now. I have my big tank-like ship. It's going to protect me from manufacturers for the time being. And AIs are too far away from me to be a threat. And I don't feel like projecting enough power to kill them right now either. So, I'm going to get a go for Xenology. First of all, it gives you access to the Academy Embassy, which lets you hire more heroes. As the Cravers, you want to have as many heroes as possible, partially to lead your armies, and you will need quite a few of your admirals in order to lead your armies effectively. But additionally, you can also have some extra governors, which will help your systems stay relevant even as the game progresses, despite the fact that they will become depleted. I just really like having Embassy, and very often, as other factions, I just don't have the time to get it, because if you, for example, want to go for the Narek University, in your case, you don't necessarily want to go for the Narek University, because you don't want to have one amazing system, you, have to, you want to have an infinite amount of crap systems, because that's who you are. You cravings, you make crap. Also, Spin Project. It's very useful, because it lets you go for laws, such as the one that gives you the extra stuff from destroying ships which is called uh, Spoils of Act War. I always forget the name of it for some reason, even though I always enact it. Maybe that's why I just don't read it, I just know where it, it, that it's there and I just click the icon. Anyway, Endless Research Pack and Endless World is available, and on our whole system we may actually have a shot at becoming, you know, lo loyal or devoted, but at the same time it takes nine tenses to create and we really don't care too much about it, like if nobody grabs it by late mid game, I will then try to go for it, but for the time being, in this cultivation is the most important for me. So yeah, there's that. Also, it looks like, oh no, we can still have more population on the cold tundra, so that's good. It's still, I still have 15 tens before I need to do anything with it, so that's fine. Alright, after a ton of talking, I can finally press the end turn button. Are you happy? You must be so excited by this series. So much action going on. Totally just not one lonely loser who is just talking to you for over 25, almost 25 minutes without doing almost anything on the screen. Well, I'm sorry, this is the purpose of this video. Alright, uh, what are you saying? They try. We what? Oh no, they are worried. Because we are stronger than them. Are we? If we're stronger than them with just, just one ship, I'm kind of thinking that they need to go extinct because they don't belong to this galaxy. But you don't want to eat your prey too early. And here's my reasoning for that. Unless you're rushing, of course, which you can do, but 
I like to let my enemies develop at least a little bit and then attack the weakest one, yes, but the reason why I like to do that is because, you know, on our plan system what is happening is that we are depleting plants extremely quickly and we are depleting them about as quickly as we are making new improvements. We are slightly faster at making improvements but not by much, which means that those improvements and everything we do on those systems is kind of not very efficient. However, if we take over the enemy system, which already has a bunch of improvements installed and a lot of, and a big population to add, and then we migrate some cravers to that system, then it will be extremely efficient and give you a ton of bonuses and uh, just be flat out amazing, which is exactly what I want. So I want those guys to actually improve their systems a little bit, become a bit stronger, and then I'm going to eat them. As for the Vodiani, I don't want to have to deal with them. They're, first of all, they're a bit scary. Secondly, like, how do you conquer somebody who's flying on arc ships? Seriously. So yeah, they, I think you get the idea. All right, Positron, strength to kill my scout ship. Can my scout ship win this battle? Probably not. Do I want to preserve my scout ship? Probably yes. So I'm going to retreat. Unfortunately, this is going to cost me one of my uh, civilian ships, but whatever. This does mean that my scout ship will be able to get to Essa and the next boss of curiosity, so I guess that's good. Alright, I don't think there's anything else to do except... Right, I almost forgot. Actually, not almost, I did forget. Last time I wanted to create another pupa ship in order and send it over to Delphinus, which is... I mean, you want to create as many colonies as... No, no, you don't want to create as many colonies as quickly as possible. But you do if you know that you can afford the food cost, because keep in mind, you're planets will ship food to other colonies via ships that can be intercepted and destroyed. And, but in this case, I have some food to spare, I'm, the other uh, outpost is about to turn into a colony, and this uh, line between Host and Del uh, Delphinos, Delphinus, whatever it's called, it's defended because of this giant intruder ship. So I can just safely expand to over there and not be scared that those tiny little ships will be intercepted by pirates. So yeah, I do want to expand over there. Anything else I need to do? I don't think there is. There might be, of course. I make errors. This is also part of the learning experience, after all. You learn by making errors. So if I do make some, feel free to point them out. And I can rebuke them, saying that they're not actually errors, or I may admit to my own faults, which I also do, because, well, nobody is perfect, after all, and I realize that full well. But keep in mind, I re usually record a bunch of videos in a bunch. Like, the last video and this video are recorded on the same day with a very small gap between them. So, if you posted something on the first video, it's literally possible for me to comment to it now because my first video isn't even uploaded yet. So, yeah, just, just saying. Alright. Uh, when you cross the borders, I don't care in the slightest. Whatever, close your borders all you like. Those guys are cordial, which is nice. It means they're taking me a bit of extra stuff, including mouth power, which I actually really like. So, I'm not going to kill them. They will be my buddies for the time being. I still. I'm not entirely sure why they like me so much, but they clearly do, so whatever. Just just love me, I suppose. Things are happening on marketplace, so military ships are decreasing prices. Assuming I have the technology to do anything with that. Spoiler warning, I do not. Anyway, let's go ahead and explore some more curiosities. So, Savannah, I'm curious what there is there to discover. Hopefully not a bad thing. So, on the Savannah we found super spots. That's pretty nice, this will be excellent deposit. And over there on Essa we found, ooh, smart tier repair bots. That's actually really good, and they use titanium as well. Which, alright, now, now it's more likely that I will use Hyperion's weapons, because then I can use the spare titanium for smart tier repair bots. And that would make my fleet scary! Oh yes, it really would. I'm kind of happy about this, uh, the current state of affairs. It looks like there's still one more curiosity, but can I even explore it? I don't think I have... No, actually, I have the um, exploratory power to discover it. So let's put my ship to sleep, and it will notify me when it can actually explore stuff. All right, you so you're a questioner. I don't want you to explore any curiosities around or even see anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and murder you because this is literally what I do best, unless you run away, which is totally fine. He was a defenseless. I'm sure he had a gun installed or somewhere on his back. Sure, not nearly as big of a gun as this guy's gun, but he had a gun nevertheless, so he was not technically speaking defenseless. I'll have you know. 
All right, so Xenology is done. Now we don't care about leveling up to Air 3 over here because as you can see, developing Ampalos does nothing for us. The only thing we gain at any point is the ability to go for Wonder Victory, which is doable for the Cravers, but it's not as efficient as it can be for other factions. So if you're in a race for Wonder Victory versus other Empires, you're more likely to lose that race. So I would not necessarily recommend it, although it can be a strategy. So keep that in mind. Okay, what do I want now? Good question, actually. Let me drink some tea as I ponder upon this question. You know what? I kind of... First of all, let's see. Host is about to run out of things to make. I can make an academy over here, but I really care about other improvements first. Although academy... Mmm, academy is so delicious. I kind of really want it. So considering the fact that I have plenty of things to construct on both my systems and on the other systems as well, I don't want to get something that is an improvement. I can go for something like Applied Happiness Program, which uh, I would need to get at some point probably anyway just because of the h fleet Accelerator. Alternatively, I can go for some of the other things to boost my resource generation, which is very tempting. Besides, that would give me the ability to, go to colonize gas giants. And I do really like Expanded Mines. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for Expanded Mines just because... Yes, it is a bit of an expensive improvement, and I did say I don't want to go for an improvement, but at the same time, it does let you gather more stuff. Then again, I can also go for Chameleon Spaces, because it's not an improvement, it's a planetary specialization. Which means that it's much cheaper to enact, it's not quite as efficient or effective, but I haven't seen all that many gas giants nearby. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit so I can... Tell. That doesn't look like a little gas giant, no gas giants, no gas giants, there's one gas giant that I don't care about, there's one on, on, another one over there, yeah, not too many gas giants, there are some over here that I'll conquer at some point, but not right now, that's not where the point is, so, coming out spaces are more important, first of all, they give my systems something to do in case they run out of uh, things to construct, which is very rare for the cravers, but it might happen, secondly, I will be able to get extra resources at a very cheap price, which is what I'm mostly concerned about right now. So, yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. It will take five turns, though, so I might be tempted to go for something cheaper. Ah, I'm so indecisive sometimes, I hate it. I don't want to make a fleet just yet, it would be really pointless. I want the Unfallen to have more of a chance to develop. But the Eucratic Sap is so not worth it as well. Then again, maybe I'll discuss some good luxuries. It's unlikely. But it's just, it costs me one ten to get it. I'm gonna get it. There's really so little reason not to. So, alright, there's that done. I've got a new people ship ready, so let's go ahead and set it. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing it this right, by the way, because if you read that exact word in Polish, that will literally translates to but. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of amusing every time I see this ship. I have to be entirely honest with you. Anyway, let's have a look. See, let's colonize the large ash. It, wait a second, it doesn't actually have any food. I could have sworn that it does have some food. Oh well, my mistake. Maybe they have nerfed it at some point in the past. Either way, no, it's strange because I could have sworn that it does have some food. Maybe it's just because of the kind of uh, stuff I had in act. Regardless, doesn't really matter. If that was a mistake, my bad. I could have sworn that ashes give you a bonus to food. Well, I may have made a mistake. Over there. Or maybe it was a change in the past, a balance change. In which case I would be excused. Because I could have sworn that ashes give you one point of food. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, end the turn for the time being. And I'm going to have, go ahead and drink some more tea because I really do need it. Alright then, I lost a craver on mutation. Why? Oh, because I'm shipping food, and I guess... I guess I'm on the negative holy boss, I really, really am. Because it's being turned into military power, and it's also being shipped over to outposts. 315... Oh, because it's shipping... I just realized Delphinus is shipping from mutation, isn't it? Yes, it is. No, I want you to ship from host of mutation, you crazy bastard. Go away. Ah, alright, now I gain food over here. Wow, I was really surprised. I had no idea what is happening with the amount of food I was losing. Now, host is going to lose the population. 
but it's also going to get into the squad version of the next tennis, so it will be able to handle this. And Trium is about to finish in three turns. I could speed this up even further if I really wanted to, and I'm kind of tempted to speed it up, and I'll be entirely honest about that. It's a lot of dust, and it will not be very efficient, but it will help. And I'll do it. Extra 10 for 250 dust, I'll actually take it. It's fine. I want to save some food. Alright, rumors of an academy. Yes, yes, we know. Academy evil plays, blah, blah, blah. We're going to try and um, win against the academy at some point, probably. Because that's what I'm going to align us, who I'm going to align us. Because, uh, you know, it just makes sense in my brain to be against the lost. Because I am not... I support and virtual endless. So why would I be working for the lost, right? I think you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's have a quick look. The speed project is nice. I want to go for that. Silver Reality, also very nice, Public Pride Partnership, also very nice. I could also make, use this system to make an academy, but I don't feel like I just yet. Also, I'm rapidly running out of space on the system, so I'll probably deal with that in a moment. How are you doing, Host? Host is uh, still losing its stuff for the time being. But what I could do is, because of uh, trying doing that... Uh, let's just leave everything as it is, alright. And the 10, and oh, right, technology. I did, I do need to do something with the technology. So do I go for the coming space? Right now I don't feel like it, I'll be entirely honest with you. It would take me a long time, and instead I can go for something that would be more appealing to me. What is that? I still don't know, actually, entirely, I'll be honest with you. And uh, so I'll think about it. How's it drink some tea? Actually, I, yeah, I do need to deal with that right now, huh? I can start leveling up military technologies, Karim, but it's not really something that I would consider necessary, not even by a long shot. So let's have a look, look, see what would strike me as something that I could use. Commercial frameworks are quite costly to enact, but they're kind of useful. And I could put commercial networks over on mutation, have them lead to Trium. Later on, this network could expand over to Ibani and to Oyad, or Veran rather. That's not a bad idea, I'm kind of tempted to go for commission networks. But this system has a lot of things to queue up. Actually, it doesn't anymore. It's a rapidly reaching a point where it doesn't need to do that. But if that's the case, I would rather go for something that gives me more science, to be entirely honest with you. So, I think I'm gonna go for great on shielded laboratories. They're kind of expensive-ish in terms of industry, and they do require you to uh, input in some extra Hyperion, but they do give you a lot of science and Considering how much science pattern we're getting right now, this is going to be very useful. I do want to have as much science as humanly possible. So there is that. Okay then, I think we're ready with this stat now, and we can go ahead and end it and see what is going to happen. Host now has more food, which was very much needed because it was running short, because of how many expansions I created. Alright, our fleet is now ready to launch an expedition, that's amazing. Also, do guide the system just in case something nasty flies in. And, uh, of course, exploring cancels your guard action for whatever reason that I don't understand. More red sang, that's actually, actually pretty good. Alright, they don't like me for some reason. I'm not sure why they don't like me this time, but... Because I swear I didn't do anything bad, but I don't care, I'm gonna burn them at some point. And they will land that they are fallen and not the fire. Or rather, no, actually, they will land that they literally are the fire and the light as they all die. So yeah, I'll actually prove them right. So they should thank me for killing all of them. And that's exactly what is going to happen. Anyway, host. I don't want to go for endless thing. It takes too long. Academy takes five turns, which is also quite long. I can go for a spin project, which uh, I definitely do want to go for. Synchronous Hive is not something that is within my reach just yet. It will take a little bit more work before I can indeed grab that, unfortunately. Let's have a quick look. See, mutation. I need to colonize the this planet in order to gain access to this titanium, it's quite a, kind of important, especially because it's a very good titanium deposit as well. So let's try to grab that as quickly as possible, and for that reason I'm going to reassign my governor over to this planet, and now Academy still takes 5 turns and this thing still takes 7 turns, so... Is the Galactic Transport in the network? I'm not too keen on. I'm just gonna go for the Academy, but I just remembered what I forgot about. I knew that there was something, and what I forgot about is level mod system modernization. I'm so damn sometimes I hate myself. Anyway, this was something I meant to do 
a long time ago. So this is going to increase my food and also allow me to ship my population to different systems. Extremely important in all of its aspects. And it only takes one turn to improve. And I have a lot of red sand because of the galaxy generation. So yeah, definitely want to do that. Let's end the turn and see what else I can do. Alright, we got two new systems and uh, some kind of notification that's related to Cravery aspects because of how it sounded. So let's see, let's see. Alright, I lost the Craver at host. And that's whatever. And I have enough Cravers to increase the military actions output, which is okay. Two more systems colonized. And a quest. So I can lose science and gain industry, or I can lose dust and gain science. I would rather lose dust and gain science, because science is very important at this stage of the game, in my honest opinion. I want dust, but I can live without some of it for the time being. So let's just deal with that. Also, what laws do I have enacted? Toys for boys? Do I, do I even want that? Uh, uh, sure, fine. I'm going to keep it. Anyway, so pirates are about to be demolished. And in fact, because I, they will definitely not run away from the fight, and they will want to fight, what I want to do is... Cancel Toys for Boys and enact uh, the Spoils of War Act, so I can gain stuff from murdering those pirates. And I do this right now, because otherwise I'll definitely forget about that. Alright, you, dear Seb, please go ahead and install drone all networks, followed by Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. All the usual, the usual, same goes for you, dear Seb. I can't even speed this up, that's a lot of dust to speak, uh, speed, uh, speed it up, I'll be entirely honest, but... It's essential to grow your systems fast, but then again, I think I'll save my dust for Delphinos, because this is a system that will struggle because of how little food it has. So I need to do that, and then again I have plenty of time before it actually grows. Let's speed this thing up, I think it's important. And then I'll assign him here to try him, but for the time being he is going to have to stay in host because he is on assignment cooldown. So there is that. Let's end the time. Graviton research will finish in a moment. I'll drink some more tea in a moment, by which I mean right now. Delicious. Alright, lifting the lap, attract new population type. Well, I'm going to murder somebody and force them to join my empire, so this will be easy. 18th influence, not really important, but still nice nevertheless, I suppose. Battle of Delphinus. Do we want to watch this? I mean, we haven't watched any battles yet, so I figure you maybe want to see the intruder ship, so... Yeah, sure, I will let you see that. Hard target, I mean, that's not really something you want to necessarily pick in that scenario. You should have gone for Tattoo if you have access to this battle card. But the attack is not the worst, I suppose. Although, it won't really benefit you at all in this scenario, I don't think. So this is the ship we got, it has a very big cannon on top. It doesn't have any other weapons, but that one big cannon is good enough, and what really matters is the fact that our camera is about to... Yeah, it collided with a giant tube of some kind. Wait, maybe it's like there is like a pool inside of this ship, and those are tubes that the scammers use to just slash down uh, like a water slide? That would be amazing. That would really be amazing. Anyway, yeah, we just have one tiny little gun. The enemy has a bunch of laser weapons. I don't think this ship has any shielding, does it? The intruder, I mean. No, intruder doesn't have any shields, but it doesn't matter. Intruder has a lot of health. And as a case, this battle is not the most exciting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that. And those guys just complain about stuff because that's what they do and boom 150 dust and science we are very very happy now you may ask me hey why don't you go to war if you gain so many benefits from going to war it's very simple there are not enough ships in the galaxy to really pay for the expenses of going to war there is no real reason to do anything of the sort additionally what is uh, important is the fact that making an army that can give me the enough income would be quite a big feat so yeah, just I will do that, but not right now. Also, I have no idea how I discovered Echinus, but I'm kind of happy I did. So it's uh, actually a really good system as well. So I definitely want to grab that at some point. It will be difficult to get it to because of the systems between me and them, and I will not be able to send in any civilian ships through without them being killed. I think, but whatever. Maybe I'll conquer one of the manufacturers when it happens. So anyway, research, research, research. Uh, actually, it's 45 minutes. I don't have to think about research right now. I will do that off camera between episodes because me thinking about research takes way too long. Also, let's go ahead and tank this guy so we can get some extra stuff, which is going to be quite important. We're not wasting the science, by the way. It's going to be saved for the next research we start, so that's important. 
Alrighty then, you did say you have extra probes, so go ahead and go to Ugda, so that you can explore some curiosities and make those guys like us even more so than they did before. Lupus, uh, yeah, the Vodianini are on the move. I may need to invest in a fleet, and I think I'll do that on the next uh, video. Because those guys are clipping in closer, and I don't have too many systems to expand to, so they will want to expand towards me, most likely. This is just how it's gonna be, though, I suppose. What is our score? It's actually pretty high, but then again, it's to be expected. Arch, because of our de plant depletion quirk, we just have to make sure that it stays this way. But for the time being, it was Poncho, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.